And welcome back to another Cannabis Thought Leadership Podcast series. Today, I am with John Marsh. John, thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm great, Abe. Thanks for having me. Great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved in the industry? What are you currently working on? You know, let us get to know you a little bit. Well, back in uh, 1993, I'd gotten out of the Marine Corps, and I was... I'd gotten back from the, I was in the Gulf War, Desert Storm, I was in the Marines, and I'd gotten sick, and when I got out, nothing was being done through the VA. So I read a book called The Emperor Wears No Clothes by Jack Hare, and read about medicines from the 1840s being used by our, you know, our recent ancestors, so I decided to look into it, took that path, and treated myself of all my Desert Storm symptoms uh-huh. and that at the same time I had read about our endocannabinoid system that had just been discovered by a team led by Miles Herkenham. Um, so in 1993 I called this guy up uh, after searching for him because there was no internet and talked to him for a while about this new discovery that we all have the receptor network to process cannabis. So. In 1993, that was my focus from there on, was to get it legal through any means possible. And here we are 23 years later, and it's happening. Yeah, (laughs) wonderful. That's how I got into it, literally, was doing that. But then I grew my own medicine and got arrested in 1994, and that's when I really dug in and said, this has to to get legal. So that's what I've been doing, basically. that's interesting. Oh, yeah. How do you so? How, do you, do you think that somebody may have um, called the police on you? How do you think that the authorities even discovered that you were growing your own medicine? Oh uh, well, I was an advocate. I had written, it was nineteen ninety three, ninety four. I grew in ninety four, so I had been pretty advocate towards getting it legal. But I was also decided I had to grow my own medicine. Yeah. So I grew thirty four plants and. Um, I had gone to shoot pool one night for a team I shot, and this guy had left the bar at the same time I showed up. And when I got home, I had a feeling someone had been in my house. So he broke in and narked off. He was a police informant for three years, so he was a paid informant. Uh-huh. And I fought it. I fought the system based on him being an actual agent of the police. But it didn't work out that way. Um, but the judge did tell me that I could not advocate the use or legalization of marijuana back in 1996. And I challenge that because it's a direct violation of just about every, you know, so right. Your first form amendment rights. So, yeah. so the appeals court agreed with me. I didn't get that stipulation placed on me, but, you know, they kept my fax machine for 18 months. And they said I was using my fax machine to sell marijuana all across the country when I lived in Bellingham, Washington and had 34 plants and probably could have got rid of it, you yeah. know, within a week. <laughs> but so they kept my property and I don't know, it just really showed me how much they want this plant not to be used. So Wow, interesting. So that was back in nineteen ninety three. How has your kind of experience in the industry evolved over the last twenty some years? Well, uh it really hasn't been an industry, right? Since right. uh yep. a little bit of medical in California ninety six, um, then Washington, Oregon in the ninety eight. But there's never really been an industry. You can't even take uh, your money to the bank right now and, and have it legitimized, right? I mean, you can sell legitimate products, but you can't go to the bank and yeah. that money in there. you got to keep it in your basement or whatever. So um, I don't think it's – as far as me, I have been trying to do the legalization thing. And there's no business in it, no money. I mean, you can consult. I bought the hemp consultants, or I became the hemp consultants in 1994. Okay. And I was writing a book at the time they kicked in my door. It was called Hemp 101, Something to Talk About. And that, I believe, is why the judge put that on me, that stipulation in my sentence, was because they knew I was writing a book. And it just, you know, it just has evolved into where I'm at right now. So... For the past four and a half years, I have been focusing on this group I started on Facebook. Uh It's called Cannabis Oil Success Stories, and it's about to go over 90,000 members. Wow. And 
And the reason I started it was uh, I went into the Rick Simpson fan page, and everybody knows Rick Simpson Oil. That, you know, that's yep. almost, you know, like saying Coke and Pepsi in this industry. Yep. But I went into his fan page because he's from Canada, and he, he always promotes using Canadian Napa, Canadian isopropyl, all this stuff. And so I questioned why we couldn't use food grade alcohol down here in the U.S., which he, you know, just blasted the quality of those solvents down here in the U.S., and I asked simply if we could use food-grade alcohol, and he and his admin both were adamant about not using any food-grade alcohol because it would make weak medicine and patients would die. So I question the mentality there, you know, because you can always just eat twice as much of a weaker <laughs> oil yeah. and equal a, quote, Rick Simpson oil. But um, So I was removed from that group, and that day I went and started Canvas Oil Success Stories, and it was to let anybody come in and find out what they can do is, you know, yeah. use this oil. Yep. So over four and a half years, I've just been in that group every single day, probably two to eight hours a day. So I've got a lot of face time in, a lot of knowledge just based on people sharing their stories, having to give them advice. Um, I had a great core of people in that group at the start in May of 2012. And so over those Five years, I've been buying up some websites, and now I have 450 web domains that are cannabis and hemp related, and that is going to be my future in this industry is being able to offer everybody something. Yeah, well, look, it's certainly uh, incredibly impressive that you've amassed such a large following in your Facebook um, group. You know, for, for many of the people listening um, who are entrepreneurs, startup companies, people just trying to get in, you know, everyone is really interested in learning how to utilize social media to get their name out there, to brand their company. Um, and it sounds like you've done a remarkable job. What, what kind of advice would you give to an entrepreneur who's looking to start up their social media presence, either through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, what, how did you go about amassing such a huge following? Well, I, so I just picked a name. It was just, you know, straightforward. Uh -huh. I wasn't marketing a business, right? It was cannabis oil success stories. I wanted to collect success stories and be able to go to the VA and say, look, how can you deny a fucking veteran this medicine if these people are using it successfully? And it's been used since the 1830s. Yeah. And so that's why I started that group. But People came to that group not to find success or to be to find out just how to use it. I, it was kind of mis and not branded because I didn't do it to brand it. Uh -huh. But it was misused as uh, more people were coming to learn. I should have called it how to be successful with cannabis uh -huh. <laughs> oil. But now it, it, it took forever to get somebody to actually give me a success story. So I now have a hundred and. 23 success stories on CannabisOilSuccessStories.com. Yeah. What I would do if I was just starting up, like if I had Sunshine Cannabis Company, I would, first of all, get testimonials. I would prove to people that at least my product worked. Okay. There's people in my group who've been selling oil that, you know, behind, I can't tell what people do behind screens, right? So... There's been people in there for three or four years, and I know they probably sell oil, but they have never shared a success story. Mm. But but that's you know on mine. If I was going to start something up right now, say Sunshine Cannabis, I would get my friends to try it. I mean, I hand out, I make a tincture, and my hometown is seven or seven towns combined for about ten thousand population, and I offer it to people around here to try, and once they try it, word of mouth, bam. So you can do word of mouth on Facebook by having somebody just message you and say, hey, that product worked awesome. Here's my success story, right? Yeah, yeah. Or okay. you guys have a great location. I don't have to go down to the middle of town and blah, blah, blah. And it's word of mouth. That's the only way because there's going to be 10,000 different CBD companies as soon as the thing gets ironed out, right? I mean... We don't even know if CBD is legal right now. And you can't really move forward until you can send a product. I mean, I could I could advertise right now in my group and 90,000 people would be able to contact me if they wanted. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, potentially get a tincture that could save their well-being. Yet, 
they can't because of these imaginary borders between legal and non-legal states. Yeah. Well, I think, government uh, and I, I think one powerful message that, that you're communicating is, is certainly for people trying to get into the industry, the goal should not be to strictly, you know, quote, brand yourself in, in this kind of very markety kind of way. You know, you're really looking to help people and communicate things that people need to know to, to heal themselves. And that kind of authenticity, I think, probably translates um, very clearly to all of your group members. Oh yeah, for sure. There's and, and back to the marketing thing. There, there, there's people that come in every day. So I, I have to pre-approve all the posts, you know, because I get fifty to sixty posts a day, and a lot of them will be, hey, come like my new Facebook page. I yeah, yeah. Do this and that, right? If I did that, I'd have fifty different ones a day. So there are people who are using my group to further their social media presence. Uh huh. Um. So my advice would be, I don't know, get in with a bigger group that is like that. Just you got to get your name spread out, or it's just going to be, or stay local. Yep. Right. And do a local. That's what you do. Just like everybody, you know, Starbucks didn't just <laughs> open up four thousand stores. They just got a small base in Seattle and then started sending out. So sure. I have like, uh-huh. I don't know, of the four hundred fifty web domains. I think having a web domain is key. You can't be Jake Jake Tramble's uh, cannabis company and not have Jake Tramble's cannabis company dot com. So you have to have an internet yeah. presence, or you're just going to be local anyway. So that's you know I have all these marketable web domains that people can use. They can come to me, and I can put their banner up. I can help them. That's what I want to do: is help patients get quality products and if I can link myself up with quality producers and not people that are importing garbage from outside the US and slapping their name on it and you know yeah. it's not it's not ethical I'm I've all I've been all about you know having US grown products US made and I just think that's you got to find out what you want to do and have a have a base of it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm hearing is, you know, establish a strong internet presence. If you're selling something, make sure to buy the domain name for your company and whatever name you have chosen. Start communicating with other people in the group, network, get your name out there, and just organically grow it. And over time, um, you should succeed. Yeah, I, I've, I've been contacted the last couple of days. One guy called and wanted to buy CannabisByTheSea.com because they're down in San Diego. And I said, well, CannabisByTheSea.com is going to be um, healing centers that are on the coast. And CannabisByTheSea is going to be somewhere where you can come if you live in a, quote, illegal state and you can become a, quote, cannabis refugee. You can come to CannabisByTheSea.com and stay anywhere and buy oil right there in a legal state. You don't even have to break the law. You just have to be in that state. So yeah. there's people like that that are contacting me right now asking if they can buy my web web domains. And like I bought 420occasions.com. Great name. You know, that can Great be an name. event. That can be an event thing. That could be a global event thing. Oh, we're, you know, I, I have one 420flowers.com. That could be a nationwide order weed service. But, you know, 440 of mine aren't, aren't able to be really used until the federal government yeah. pulls their head out. I have dosingcannabis.com. That would benefit 100,000 people. You know, the, this... Picking the right name is so important, and, and of course, you know, our law firm specializes in intellectual property protection for the cannabis industry, and, you know, many of our clients um, come to us to help get trademarks on their names and, and all sorts of, of this kind of stuff. Um, what has your experience been like with protecting your intellectual property? Have you focused much on that, or are you kind of leaving that by the wayside? How do you kind of well, view your own business vis-a-vis legal protections? So, you guys are a prime a primary example of a firm that I need to be networking with, right? I mean, uh-huh. I have all these assets, 450 web domains, which I, which when I look at them, I can see 10,000 to a million dollars on each one. Uh-huh. Like I own Big Apple Cannabis, 
right? That's a New York thing that someone could take and turn into a million dollar business. So my experience is I don't, I haven't done any. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I tried to write my own trademark to the U.S. government for the cannabis consultants. Yeah. But because cannabis and hemp are no no names, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't get one. Well, they're tricky. It's interesting you say that. You know, we uh, we've worked with a lot of companies. Um, that have been in similar situations. And there are kind of more exotic, um, I would say, skilled ways to go about circumventing that problem, which, you know, I'd be happy to speak to you about after. Um, but, but it is certainly a problem. You know, the federal government generally issues um, trademarks or the USPTO. Trademarks cannot be attached to a good or service that cannot be legally pushed through commerce. Cannabis is legally um, not available on the federal level, and so many people have this problem. Um, that's interesting. Okay, so that was right. But like we discussed, I'm the cannabis consultant. I, I just insinuate nothing about selling an illegal product, right? I'm just consulting people about a plant, right? So that was my. I didn't have the money to whatever you call that when you put it back through. Uh huh. Re refile an, an appeal. Yeah, an appeal. So, you know, in the future, I don't doubt that you and I will talk about yeah. my appeal and my 400 potential trademark that I would like to do, like Nike Hemp and Nike Cannabis. I own those. Mm. Yeah, that right? would, Yeah, I mean, that would be challenging also. It could be that you could get a trademark, and then if Nike found out about it, they would say that, you know, they, they would bring up different claims, and, you know, we, we could have a whole trademark discussion on her right now. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah, completely. And yeah. my thing to Nike would be, well, there's categories, and you guys didn't check the right categories that want that you didn't want Nike represented in the drug thing. And right. Nike is not a brand name; it is a name of a a goddess, right? From yep. you know, back in the day. So they don't own the rights to the name; they just own the rights to anything associated with apparel and shoes and anything Nike has checked the box on on that form. So yeah, there's a. Uh, you're it's right. going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting because I own Armani Hemp and Adidas Hemp too. So those are going to be – and I also own HighTimesCannabis.com. I'm not sure I haven't gotten a hold of High Times Magazine yet, but, yeah, you know, we'll see. Interesting. <laughs> it's okay. going to be interesting. So so tell tell everyone what kind of a day-to-day -day, um, experience is for you being in this industry. You know, it's Monday morning. You wake up. You know, how do you get your day going vis-a-vis -vis your, your business and – and what does a workday look like for you as someone who's kind of getting involved more heavily, it sounds like, on the consulting side of the cannabis business? Um, what is that experience right. like? Okay. Yeah, and it's just starting to, you know, consulting is just starting to yeah. get in. The, I know guys who will do a, they'll do a deal where, let's say, a, they, a dispensary wants them to come in and consult. First yeah. thing they'll do is say, well, what do you pay for le your lease? Yep. Well, we pay 1500 Well, Say it's two thousand, and I'm taking five hundred a month. Now I'll consult with you. Consultants are basically getting skin in the game. Uh -huh. Most of their consulting, they want a piece of the pie. I consult for free, <laughs> but when I wake up, I know that in my Facebook group, I've probably got a hundred to two hundred people wanting to join. Um, I vet every single person. I don't want scammers in there. I don't want oil. So I just want to vet people. So I almost go, I can look now after four and a half years and realize there's a scammer, there's a legit person. Oh, that person started their profile yesterday. I see. Uh, so I spend an hour or two uploading people to my group and also going through the posts. I don't let posts just go up while I'm sleeping. Someone could just say, John March is a dickhead and <laughs> or whatever, right? And then I wake up to this. So I don't let posts go up. So I wake up Probably between 8 and 10, uh -huh. even sometimes later. I, I, into noon, I'll be uploading the stories, but say there's 50 questions. Someone says, what should I take for prostate cancer? I will be the first commenter, so I'll take 5, 10 minutes and answer the questions, approve them. Well, I'll approve them, and then I'll throw in my answer and then let the group go at it. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to get some shitty information, just like anything. So you just got to weed out. What is said, and by the end of a by the end of a post, everybody's on board with prostate cancer needing THC and THCA, most likely, yeah. or whatever that discussion's about. So my first half of the day is pretty much dedicated to 
my group, which I quit my uh, roofing sales job back in 2014 to do it full time. Wow. I had no job. Didn't charge people, you know. I, like I said, I made some tinctures on the side to pay the rent, but um, I've been doing this all for nothing since about 1996. Wow, okay. And do you find yourself looking to monetize it more in the future, or do you, or are you planning on transitioning more into um, kind of a, a bona fide cannabis consulting company, or how do you see that going for you? Uh, well, I've been tossing up these options. In my opinion, I have 450 of these web domains, and if I turned each one into its own web domain and offered it to the public, I could sell these things for 10 to 50 grand, because uh -huh. they are ready to go, you know, you got Green Door Canvas, I'm going to send you a Green Door, you're going to franchise it, I'm going to market it for you, I'm going to send you the products, it's a no-brainer, bam. Uh-huh. Um... Shoot, I see. I off my train of yeah, okay, uh, that's interesting. No, yeah, we're just kind of talking about how to how, how you may or may not choose to move into more of the commercial side of things. Oh, right. Well, yeah, I didn't. So each one of these cost me fifteen bucks, and that's four hundred and fifty. So I've got six grand just into buying all these things. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I value them very high. I didn't just buy them so someone could turn around and say, "Hey, can I get that for twenty five bucks?" I'm a nice guy. No. If you want American cheap cannabis, you are going to pay for what I have into it and building it up. So I value them at 10,000 minimum. So times 450, I'm probably sitting on four and a half million dollars worth of domain names. what I consider web domains. Just uh -huh. sitting here. It's like owning real estate, right? If you want to park yourself on the net and you want to do it under your name, if your name is Big Top Cannabis, well, I own BigTopCannabis.com. So you're going to come find me and we're going to network and I'm either going to lease you that or I'm going to sell it to you or help you network. I don't really care. Uh -huh. I, would like to, I would like to banner ad for people. Like I, w I would like to get THC Legal Group's banner uh, card and for 10, 20, 50 bucks a month put you in my banner so you'll, your banner will come up a thousand times in a week for X amount on yeah. all of my websites. You won't know, you know, you can pick and choose which ones you can say, I want it to hit all 450. Here's 50 bucks a month. You know, so if I can get 100 people like you paying me 50 bucks a month, I got five grand. Now I can pay my rent and eat and keep helping people. I see. Okay. But so you, you I am going to monetize. I, I'm talking small, right? 5,000 a month. I could literally probably make 5,000 a month off all 450. So. So does but that I mean you plan to. on? Yeah. <laughs> does that mean you plan on building out websites for each one of those domain names? Oh, for sure. I wish I wish I had ten web developers right now. I would say, listen, I have abcd.com. I'm not going to pay you because I don't have money, but we're going to build this website, and you're going to get X percent once it's built, and all the yeah. sales CBD. You're going to you're going to uh, manage that site. <laughs> you sit on your ass and manage that site for two hours a day, and you're going to make a part of that website. So yeah, I'm just sure. not a web guy, right? I go to GoDaddy and click and point and yeah. Uh, I've done this. So my days, I need 48 hours in a day. Uh -huh. And I wish I had them. And, uh, oh, the first thing I do is take a dab in the morning. That's a given. So, mm. uh, yeah. And then my afternoons, it's whatever comes up, right? I can, if someone says, I'd like to come see how you make tinctures, they can swing in. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. A little place in Chinook, Washington. And, uh, it's an old 1905 building that I've turned in to look like an old apothecary downstairs. And um, cool. I have an inversion table and a punching bag. People can come in and, you know, for $20 an hour or whatever the consulting fee is, come in and Hang out go for a bit. buy old books. I got 60 old books from the 1830s up to the 1940s that show cannabis as a medicine. Awesome. Uh, yeah, nobody can come into my building and walk out being opposed. I've, I have literally dedicated two decades to where I am yeah. to help people understand that this is just a fucking plan. Yeah, very cool. Well, you know, maybe you could launch an e-commerce site to start, um, I don't know, launch well, an e-commerce site and who knows, you know, there are so many options available to you. It's very exciting. I have those. I just can't, you know, I can't say, well, I'm selling cannabis oil and we have cannabisoil.com because, yeah, which I have, we don't, I have a lot of those, um, 
uh, cannabisoilonline.com. Yeah. We have cannabisoil.com. Just a lot of them. I have 20 CBD names. Yeah. I'm just ready to go. If, 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 if Donald Trump said, we're going to unleash the billions of dollars in the basements right now, bring it into the bank, yep. boost this economy, and legitimize the fact that these people are doing what George Washington and Thomas Jefferson did. Yeah. No different. You could pay your taxes back then with it. I seriously think you should be able to pay your taxes with things. You know, I helped $50,000 worth of oil to people over the last three years. I should be able to write that off. Definitely. They didn't have to use the insurance system. They didn't have to use this and that. They didn't die. Um, it was a benefit to everybody I gave oil to, right? Definitely. I should be able to write that off, but I can't even mention it on my tax returns. So why even file taxes, right? Absolutely. Um, hmm. Well, listen, we're, we're coming towards the end of the podcast. I really just want to give you an opportunity um, to, to tell people, you know, how they should leave this podcast and what they should think about you and what you're doing. And, of course, how they can reach out and connect with you and, and do some business with you. Well, my primary focus is my, is my Facebook group and the web domain that I've converted it to, CanvasOilSuccessStories.com, because Facebook – a couple of years ago was going to, you know, rumored to wipe out every cannabis name group on the planet. And everybody was freaking, where do we go? How do we get a hold of you? What do we do? Yeah. So I got the cannabisconsultants.com and I have the hempconsultants.com, which I started, you know, in 1994, that name. And my group, I would encourage people, if you are looking to consult business-wise, I would get a hold of me through email at John Marsh at the cannabisconsultants.com. It is only me, the cannabisconsultants.com. It has an S on it, but right now it's only me. Wonderful. Uh, I wanted to be the LinkedIn of cannabis and have everybody listed to where everybody could go to one site and find everybody, but nobody has really embraced that yet. So I'm going to have to start reaching out and build that up. But once it is, I would say the cannabisconsultants.com is going to be a huge hub where you can find any consultant on anything. Wonderful. And that's that's where I'm going to have all my websites listed. If you want to, you know, brand your stuff or whatever, I am definitely going to be somebody who you can contact for quality advice and not a big price because, like I said, I don't even charge people when they email me. Mm. If they can send me a donation to Skype or stripe or whatever i don't even know what my stripe is so that's what i would say wonderful See my website wow well listen thanks john this was really interesting extremely informative I, I think everyone is excited about um kind of getting getting in on the, on the social media game as you've managed to do so successfully um and we'd love to have you sh back on the show in the future thanks uh, thanks so much yeah, I would, Abe, I would love to be on another one because I got a lot to say about this, you know, this medical system, how it's, how it's going. So Great. anytime I'm, I'm available and okay. I appreciate your, your time and, uh, okay. very much so. Well, thanks, Sean. This was another cannabis thought leadership podcast with John Marsh. This is Abe Cohn with THC Legal Group and we will see you all next time.